You're on the double XL freshman list. I'm on though. Freshman cover. I'm on though. How did it feel? It was a blessing. Man, you know, I used to lay back in jail and, you know, look at the holes in that bitch. <laughs> the eye candy. Yeah. I used to lay back and look at the little holes in there. I used to lay back in jail and just look at the double XL. I mean, even out here on the streets, you know, you would grab a magazine just to see who was in there. Mm -hmm. Your favorite rappers, you know. And I remember one freshman class, I forgot everybody that was on there, but they all had on all white. I was like, man, I'm going to get, I'm going I'm to be on that cover one day. One day I'm going to be on that cover. I kind of knew it in my heart. And then, you know, all praise be to the high power, whatever faith anybody is, whatever faith that anyone is, but all praise be to the supreme being up above. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a beautiful thing. What's meant to be is meant to be. Game took some shots at all the double XL freshmen. The song called Bigger Than Me. I heard that, but I ain't never hear the song. You never heard the song? No. And then I ain't gonna lie. At where I'm at in, my, in the game right now, like I say, penitentiary rules in effect. You know, when you getting off that bus, hitting that, hitting that facility, they got people on that yard saying anything on that yard to you. Mm -hmm. But once you get on the yard, that's when it's game time. Right. So I can't entertain words. You can't defeat me with words, whoever you are. You know what I'm saying? And then that's for anybody that say something about me. Kevin Gates, you a bitch ass, puss ass nigga. I can't entertain that. Mm -hmm. I got to stay focused. I can't let nobody trick me out of my position because I know where I come from. I got my DLC number tattooed on my hand. You where, where's that? That's it? Yeah, it's right here. 537542. You can show your hand in the, in the camera? Yeah. That's my DLC number right there. You hear me? Department of Corrections. Yeah, Department of Corrections number, you know. So I'm already stamped. I'm official. At one point, you were managed by Young Money? Yeah, I'm still managed by Young Money. By, by who exactly? Fee. Okay. Yeah, Fee managed me right now, Young Money. But I'm also managed by Be Rich also. Yeah, shout out yeah. to Be Rich. Yeah, so me and him been working. Being in New Orleans and, you know, with, with cash money and, you know, YMCMB being, being from that element, um, was there ever a point where you were going to get signed, you know, cash money or Young Money or anything at that point? I, I was supposed to sign with Young Money. Okay. I was supposed to. But I sat around Birdman. You know Birdman gonna sit around and give you the real. Yeah. Man, look, when I've been doing this 20 years, I got it out the mud doing this. I'm, yeah. I want to do what you did. I want to get it out the mud. You know, so I just wanted my own brand. Once I saw how he did it, it just inspired me. Yeah. Yeah, Bird did it. You know, he really from out the ghetto. Right. You know. Yeah, you know, when, you know, back when we, I used to listen at you, you know, made man, gold mouth dog. Now we sitting in the same room together, mm -hmm. you know, not, and you giving me the game. But I believe he gave me the game because I was soaking the game up. I like to look at the game, analyze the game, you know. And he saw that. He saw I was hungry for it, so he was feeding me the game, feeding me that knowledge. You know, that's what me, I'm a real seeker of knowledge. So he saw that, and when he got to feed me that game, I, I took off. You know, I took off. So was there ever a deal on the table, or was it just more of a relationship? It, yeah, it's a relationship. You know, that's going to always be my family, you know, and I salute him, you hear me, for what he, what he told me and what he taught me. Even Wayne, too, you know, he was more of a mentor. You know, he gave me a different approach with music. Hmm. I used to sit in there and watch him. Well, I'm going to relate it to this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give you this illustration. You know, to learn how to cook dope goods, you got to be around a good dope cooker, you know. And, you know, most artists don't give you their recipe. They don't let you get in the kitchen with them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Most people in the streets, they not about to let you get in the kitchen and watch. So Wayne let me get in the kitchen with him. You heard me? I mean, don't you be in the kitchen late nights. Everybody in the studio sleep. I'm in there just, yeah. What this do? You know, what that, yeah. How you, yeah. Hmm. Man, so I like, yeah, you know. Got my, you know, so I started breaking my wrist. But he just gave me an, a, a different approach. What do you, what do you think was, was one thing that, you know, that kind of stands out that you took away from, from being around Wayne. You know, in terms man, of his recording technique. Let me tell you something about Tunchi, about that little boy. Man, that little boy, I'm talking about come to the studio every day. I'm talking about like he ain't got a dollar in his pocket. He hmm. come to that studio and grind every day like he ain't got a dollar in his pocket. You know, when I saw that, oh, this the game? He, that when he told me, man, look, all you got to do is grind, grind. You know, once I saw that you, oh, this what you do, you grind? Oh, man, bet. 
bed. Well, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, bed, bed, you know. So I, most people don't give you the game like that. Mm -hmm. So for him to not be selfish and for them to see something in me like this, you know, and just bless me and not be at the plateau that I'm at right now, I mean, whatever, which it ain't really no big plateau because I ain't the one no Grammys. Mm -hmm. You know, we barely scratching the surface, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like I say, but it's all a blessing. I know what I got to do. You know, as soon as I leave from over here talking to you, I'm going to take my ugly ass home and go jump in that shower and take my ugly ass to somebody's studio and be trying to get it in right fast. You hear me? Right. Everyone could be the one. I'm trying to throw a brick every time. You went through the juvenile system, um, but when you got out, you kept you kept kind of getting mixed up with Yeah, the because it took the fear of imprisonment away. You so know, you once you go to jail as a child, you, oh, this it? <laughs> you hear me? And it criminalizes you. So you, you, you're more subject to go back and do the same things that you were doing. You just think you're doing it better. You know what I'm saying? But it's all designed for you to fail. Right. You were most recently facing 30 years. Yeah. What were you facing 30 years for? I am already was a convicted felon since 2000. And, uh, I already had my first adult conviction. By the time I came home in 17, mm -hmm. I went back to jail that Christmas. I came home in the middle of March. 2003, I went back to jail that Christmas, the day after Christmas, tell you the truth, you know, for defending myself, for self-defense. Okay. You know, in front of the movie theater, you know, I end up, you know, another self-defense, I end up stabbing a dude a few times or something like that, you know what I'm saying? So it was a, I forgot what the charge was, but I was already a convicted felon. Okay. So I end up getting, going back to jail and was fighting a charge in 2007 or something like that. I for really forget the years because I had kind of been in and out a little bit. You know, nothing, mm -hmm. you know. But I laid down like close to 2008. I came home 2011. I did 31 months. I tell people like I did close to three years. Close to three years. I did 31 months. It was supposed to be 28 months. They didn't give me my credit. So I did 31 months. I came home October the 11th. But when I went to jail, it was for being a convicted felon already in possession of a firearm around a controlled dangerous substance, which mm -hmm. is drugs. Well, the law is, if it's your first offense with a weapon, it's five years. Mm -hmm. If you're a convicted felon with a firearm, that's 10 to 15. If you're a convicted felon with a firearm around a controlled dangerous substance, that's another 10 to 15. So you're 30. the first person I ever broke down the charges. Yeah. You're the first person I talked to and broke down the charges because I just finished with the parole. Okay. I was I got off parole on um, supervised release. I got off supervised release June 11. That was a really a couple of days ago. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I just really been trying to keep my nose clean and stay focused. But you the first person I that I really broke it down to. So while in court, you know my history. I have a prior history, which most individuals that come from an impoverished environment will have a prior criminal record. You know criminal history, and they use that and say, well. You know, we can't hit you with the Habitual Offender Act, but you're on your way to be a career criminal. Let's give him 30. Hmm. You know, the judge said, you don't learn from uh, me running time. You don't learn from me running time concurrent. And what running time concurrent means is if you get 10 and you get another 10, yeah, it's, they it's run 10. them together and yeah. you just do 10. Yeah. But if they do them, if they run them wild, consecutive, you do 10, then you do 10. So they was telling me they was going to do the, the 10 to 15. They was going to run them consecutive. And I mean, that was going to be 30 years. I mean, being being in the, in the criminal element and also being in prison for, for a number of years, what, what do you think was the, the most violent thing you've ever witnessed yourself? Violence? Yeah. I can't say the most violent thing that I ever witnessed because that would be me ratting if you really want to okay. be honest. Fair but enough. I can say this. Prison was the best thing that ever happened to me. How so? Because you're going to learn respect for yourself and you're going to learn respect for every, for all the things around you. That's like in the penitentiary. You know, a lot of people hear me say my penitentiary rules in effect. I'm going to respect me and I'm going to respect every individual around me. Yeah, everything count. Yeah, he might be smaller. This other individual might be weaker than me. But he may be able to beat me from the mind. And what I mean by beat me from the temple, I could beat him up right now, you know. Mm -hmm. But he the one who served me my food at the child house. <laughs> so what happened when he crushed some glass up and put it in my drink and gave it to me? Yeah. Now I'm shitting blood. Yeah. I'm coughing blood, shitting blood now. Yeah. I done seen it done. 
I just learned how to respect the things around me and respect myself. Because, you know, if you can outthink a man, you got a man beat. So I never underestimate my opponent at any times, and I always respect myself. And I really, I'm a gentleman. It only get gangster if necessary. You have how many kids? Man, I got a lot of kids. A lot of kids. No, I don't have a lot of biological children. But I hate to say this on camera, you can't tell them that I'm not their biological father. But I don't like to make the distinction between Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, feel, I understand. You know, because I got a lot of children that I take care of and do for. Like, you know, the, the newly, the, one of my newest daughters, she probably about, man, I don't know how old Jair is. She, she just added to the family, you heard me? Her dad and then got, you know, messed up. So, you know, I take care of her. Now, I pass Jordans, everything. I don't get the seal or nothing like that, but I send her my animal money, he'll take care of her. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way I rock, big brother. I got a big heart. But any woman, in the, in the, in the, any woman that I'm dealing with, I'm not about to allow you to manipulate me with a child. You can't do that because we're in a partnership. You know, the mother has to do her part and I have to do my part. Now, I know I may be rambling, big brother, but well, these are very good. sensitive subject matters. They're emotional subject that's matters. That's why we're talking about For it. me, you heard me. Now, you had two kids born within a week of each other? Yeah. One born in November, one born in December. They like two weeks apart. Two weeks apart. Yeah. Uh, how was that experience having two kids from, from two different mothers at the same time and going through all that emotional? Both of them. I didn't go through that, big brother. Both nope. of them. Both of those women loved me with all their heart. So it was about making me happy. I didn't come in the picture and say, look, uh, I'm going to be your moon, your star, and your universe. No. I'm the realest nigga you're going to ever meet in your life. You got to accept the good, the bad, and the ugly when you're dealing with me. Because I ain't shit. Do the two of them get along? Yeah, they yeah, well, they really don't know each other. They don't? But they have okay. a speaking relationship. It's cordial. Okay. Yeah, it's very cordial. You know. It's, they'll speak to each other if need be. But they never knew each other. See, I had one relationship over here and one relationship over here. But it really, one of them was like my best friend. Mm -hmm. And she told me she had never deal with me. But we accidentally had sex and... Man, I wouldn't got her name tattooed on me. And you know she made me wait like almost about eight months. <laughs> she was a virgin. I wouldn't got her name on me right afterwards. You know, I was in love. You know, I'm tender dick. I ain't gonna lie. I was in love. <laughs> I was in love, you heard me? But she believed in me more than I believed in myself. Because, you know, coming from out the streets, low self-esteem, you know, you can't no woman tell me that I'm attractive or nothing like that. Man, I ain't got no money. How I'm attractive. <laughs> you know, so things of that nature. So you have low self-esteem. So... You, you, you involve yourself in a lot of reckless behavior, you know. And when I say reckless behavior, not wearing rubbers, mm -hmm. you know. I was fortunate. I don't have any STDs. But, hey, you know, Baton Rouge like number two for AIDS. Yeah. Number two. You have friends who caught HIV? Man, want me to tell you something? My daddy died February 25th. My biological father, mm -hmm. he died from AIDS. Really? Yeah. He, told, he used to tell me, man, I had more holes than clothes. That's what he used to tell me. I had more holes than clothes. I never understood what that meant. You heard me? I never understood that. You know, I had more holes than, you know, Macy's got dresses, you know. I never understood <laughs> what that meant back then. Right. I understand now. Yeah. Then you say you had more holes than clothes? But look, you know, unfortunately, look what happened. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Ray Nagin, you know, no rubber. You know, I call that Ray Nagin, colloquially speaking, you know, slang terminology. I like to use Ebonics a lot, but Ray Nagin, ridiculous. Um, yeah. How long did you know that he, he was HIV positive from the- you know, I met him in like the eighth grade, to be honest. I met my biological father in the eighth grade. Okay. And when we met, there, it was never no love or nothing. You know, my, you know, I had been lied to my whole life. I thought one man that wasn't even my father was my biological father. Really? And he wasn't. And I had a biological did, father. Did, did he- Think that himself, or no? Was he he was, knew. He knew. He knew. My stepfather okay. knew that he wasn't, that he wasn't my real father. But God, man, all praise be to God. I got a street daddy, like what Birdman is to Lil Wayne. I got a street daddy. I got somebody I call daddy. You know, I never had a real dad at all. But I call my street daddy. I call him my daddy. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be the man of great character. You know, I wouldn't be the man that I am right now. And me and him bump heads every day. But we bumped heads because he loved me enough to want to see me not make the same mistakes that he made. But I wanted to be like him. Mm -hmm. 
What, what was it like seeing seeing your father die die from AIDS? It wasn't like anything, to be honest with you, big brother. I was locked up. Uh, I came home on a pass for the funeral. Uh -huh. I was uh, I was 17. I had just made 17, February the 5th. I came home on a pass for the funeral. Then I went back. I went back up there to uh. I went back to where I was. They was housing me in uh. I left. I went back to uh Pineville, Louisiana. I went back up there. You heard me? They drug test me and everything before I went back. <laughs> went back up there. Hey. Did you pass the drug test? Oh uh, man, you already know. <laughs> I don't do drugs, no. So you don't smoke weed? Man, say, bro, I'm still scared to smoke a blunt. Really? I just know as soon as I hit it, man, they about to come. Get on the ground! You know, I just know it. <laughs> but they're just, you know what I'm saying? Well, you're in California right now, and it's actually somewhat legal Man, say, here. bro, I'm spooking out here, too. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> There's me, people come out here and tell you, man, I'm a gangster. That's cool. You heard me? Me, I don't have that story. Man, I tell people, quick, you know. Man, look, I can't get in there. Why? Man, don't smoke in a car. Why, Gates? Man, that's probable cause for a search. Right. That all the police got to say is he smelled marijuana. Mm -hmm. You can lie and say you smelled marijuana. That's probable cause for a search. But ignorance of the law is no excuse. Right. The judge told me that. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And it's not. It's not. There's no excuse. Really? But I'm scared to death, man. I ain't going to lie. I'm scared <laughs> to death. I'm you, scared to death. You got a lot more to lose now. Yeah, I'm scared to death. You know, people be asking me, man, say, bro, you want to smoke something? First of all, I'm a street nigga. You know, Gage, here you want to hit the weed? I ain't see that get rolled up. Oh, so you don't I know think what, too much You don't to know smoke. what's in it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't see you roll that up. I'm a street nigga. I ain't see you roll that up. I ain't going to tell you that when you offer it to me. Nah, I'm good, people. I appreciate you, though. I feel you. You know, but I'm looking how you acting. That might not be weed in there. <laughs> might be some coke. I got my master's in psychology. I don't tell a lot of people that, but I have my master's in psychology. You know, I received my degree in prison. So I, I really know how to analyze, you know, body language. I study human behavior all day. Mm -hmm. You hear me? One thing my brother, Jim Jones, taught me. He said, man, Gates, all you got to do is play dumb and be smart. Yeah, play dumb and be smart. So I'm going to sit around and watch you. Let me see how you acting when you smoke that, what you call weed. That might not even be weed you smoke. You know, I'm a man of great morals and I'm a man of great principles. I never read it on nobody. And that's when I could look in the mirror and look at myself and say, you know what? Kevin, I fuck with you. You know, I always stood tall. Win, lose, or maybe. My grandfather taught me that. You not fighting to win. Every time you fight, make sure you die. You going in there to die. Hmm. You going in there to get your point across. Because your children got to live up under your name. What kind of name you want for yourself? Now, I don't want the name of an individual that I let somebody trick me on my position with words. No. And I tell that to all my younger brothers also, you hear me, because I'm involved in a youth, like a, a youth mentorship program where I mentor the young people. I just want them to know, you know, look at me as an example. Man, whenever somebody say something about you, you hear me, whether it's direct or indirect, don't entertain that. But don't let nobody trick you out your position, man. You know what I'm saying? Birdman Stay been focused. good. Birdman been good for that. If you notice someone like a Birdman, everyone takes shots at him. He don't say nothing and keep man, getting, you heard what keep Bird, getting you rich. You heard what Birdman said also, huh? Beef, I don't discuss. Mm. I don't discuss. Right. You okay. know. You know, you talk about, you know, I'm sure you were in a lot of positions where if you gave certain people up that your time would be shaved off significantly or you'd be let go. I ain't didn't had that situation happen with me before where if you rat, then you could go home early. I ain't had that. You never had that? No, I ain't never had that. But I done seen it where individuals, man, I got information and not go to jail. Nah, every time I go to jail, I got to lay down, bro, for some reason. I know a lot of people that go in, come right up out that thing. Yeah. I just, I wasn't that fortunate. My consequences always was harder mm -hmm. and harsher. And I always ask God, like, man, why I always got to get the short end of the stick? You know what I'm saying? Why I always got to get the, 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 you know, the raw end of the deal. Well, but you know. But with great power comes great responsibility. So I had to be molded into what I am. But, you know, you may not have been given that opportunity, but being in the streets, you know things and you could always volunteer yeah, you could certain tell, yeah. information. You'll be a CI, a confidential informant. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's always an option. In the legal system. Yeah, because, you know, if you really pay attention, the police only know what you tell them. Right. 
And right now they follow rappers right now because rappers like to affiliate themselves with D-Boys. Like that's supposed to get them some type of certification because you with somebody that hustle. Mm -hmm. You really ain't doing them but putting his family in jeopardy. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Man, that, that don't go together, man. Rap in the streets don't go together. This entertainment. Entertainment in the streets don't go together. You know, but I found a way to tell my story and tell the story of the individuals around me. You know what I'm saying? And people relate to it. You know, what I do is something called reality rap. You well, know. Why do, why do you think so many rappers like to, you know, affiliate themselves with criminals? I don't know. Like I say, maybe, maybe it might give them some type of certification. Hmm. I don't know. But me, I just know this. Man, when you a, a rapper and you in the light, the individuals around you in the light too. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the rapper, but what does he do? What does he do? That's when them questions get to, you know, then them investigations say, bro, when the feds come, they like Jesus Christ. They already know everything about you right. when they come. A 95% conviction rate? They got a 98% conviction rate. Not because of, not because of they've been doing good police work, because niggas tell. Niggas rap. Niggas tell on niggas. Niggas kill niggas. Niggas jack niggas. Niggas hate on their homeboys. That's what niggas do. We do it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why they got a 98% conviction rate, because niggas go in there and talk. Do, do you feel it's getting worse? Do you feel that when you were younger, there were certain morals that, that They was ratting from... back then, too. <laughs> they was ratting back then when I was so, little. So I just shit. was too young to know. Huh. You know, I, I listened to that, but I was fortunate enough to come up under some, some individuals that were silent. You know, that taught me, you know, they imputed, you know, wisdom and knowledge in me and taught me one thing, you know, man, you're a man of morals and principles. If you be a rat, you might as well let a nigga fuck you. You a rat. Wow. You know, but they don't look at it like that no more. They don't look at the game like that no more. TV got it looking like it's great. You know, like on, uh, what that movie was? Nino Brown. He read it on there. Uh, New Jack City. Yeah, he read it. Right. They like talking about Frank Lucas, even though he told on the police, he told. You can't say he told on the police. Man, that nigga read it, man. So, so you, don't, you don't find any distinction between telling you on the You man, ratting is ratting. How do you not, man, you told. That yeah. ain't being a gangster. Being a gangster is win, lose, or maybe, man, solid. To the gristle. And, it, and it's emotional for me, bro. I get emotional about it because I got partners that's doing life right now, not because you caught them. Not because you proved that they was guilty, but because people got on the stand and pointed the finger. You know, now this man, you done took this man from his family. Now, this little girl, I had her since she was two. She called me her daddy. I done had her since she was two. My dog, Fred Grisby, he's doing life. He's never coming home. You hear me? They say they're going to let him do 10 and let him come home, but right now they talking about they ain't letting him come home. Mm. You know, but, you know, prayer changes all things. But not because they found, they did, you know, CSI and got evidence and all that. No. They didn't do that. They didn't do forensics or none of that. He, yeah, Someone a nigga got, told on him. On stand and say a nigga did. got on the stand and pointed the finger, man. Two niggas to be exact. Two niggas to be exact. I feel you. Street niggas. Gold teeth. Street niggas, man. <laughs> yeah, I saw this. I could name a, that, that's just a story, that's somebody, that's one individual that's close to me. I can name a few individuals that's close to me that niggas done told on. How many, how many friends do you think you've lost through, man, viol through, through violence? Through, man, I ain't gonna say violence, I'm gonna say just from the streets. From the streets. Everybody I ever loved. Yeah. Everybody I ever loved, big brother. Everybody that was significant and meant something to me, they're either dead or I'm going to know him for the rest of my life, but we'll never see him again because I'm a two-time convicted felon. I cannot go in a penal facility and visit anyone. Really? I can't even go see him. Oh, I, I didn't know that was the rule. All I could do is send you money. That's it. And pick up a phone, call, pick up a phone call. But the way my career been going lately, I can't. I don't be around the phone and answer when the people call it. Mm -hmm. I don't be around. Every now and then I might catch a phone call and man, what's up, bro? You know, and up with you for a little while, but I'm doing this. And my heart with them, bro. I love them to death. Wish they was with me. But, hey, what's meant to be, meant to be. And like I say, they on their journey. I'm on my journey. I love them. I carry them with me with everything I do. But that's why I move the way I move. When you see me, no entourage, big brother. I'm yeah. out there with my little baby in the car. My newborn, he about five weeks old. And my girl, she out there with me. But when did you start getting the face tattoos? 
Um, you know, anything that I get tattooed on me for is tattoos, you know, this come from pain, from hurt. Mm -hmm. And everything has a significant meaning, such as the soldier sign. Most people think it's a cross. I won't disclose the meaning of what it means, but it's mm -hmm. a soldier sign, the teardrops. People be like, are you a killer? And I tell them that's not what the teardrops stand for. They stand for being forever in sorrow. Mm -hmm. Most killers have them behind kills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some people have them because they done lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. What mine mean, they mean what they mean to me. Right. No one else would ever understand anyway. People ask me about my star. You know what your star, if you stretch your hands out right now, your body makes the, a star. Hmm. So it's the body, it's the symbol of God, whatever symbol you want it to mean, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Uh, at what point did you start taking rap seriously? Um, when I was reinserted back into society in 2011, I started taking rap serious. I got to see that I had a fan base, you know. I, I looked at the demographic, I said this in another interview, I saw my demographic and I, you know, people see me and they cry when they see me, you know. I just, people, they hear my story and it, you know, you know, it motivate them, you know. You know, when they see it, you know, a lot of individuals learn from me, you know, they like Kevin, you know, I was really enlightened by a lot of the knowledge and wisdom that you may have imputed. And I say, yeah, because, you know, being in that PM facility, man, you're going to meet some of the most intelligent individuals that you ever met in your life. You know, I don't advocate stupidity. I don't advocate being foolish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why I don't even hang with nobody my age. You can't tell me nothing but your business if you my age. I don't want to hear. If you're not in your 50s, I don't even want to talk to you, tell you the truth. If I can't detect no sensibility in you, you don't speak with sense, I'm going to get away from you. Or I'll tell you something stupid back and just still get away from you. <laughs> I dumb it up quick. I feel you. Why not dumb it up so quick? You can ask me any question, I'll tell you I don't know. And try to get like a million feet away from you. Because I could tell that if you don't care about what you're saying, you probably don't care about yourself. Yeah. So if you don't care about yourself, you're subject to put yourself and me in jeopardy. I can't have that. I got too much to lose right now. Tell me what it was like to grow up in New Orleans. Um, it's a, New Orleans is very, growing up in New Orleans is very poverty stricken. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what me and my grandmother lived there. I moved from New Orleans to another city like not even 30 minutes away called Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and mm -hmm. that's where I grew up at. Okay, so you grew up in Baton Rouge. I'm from New Orleans, but I grew up in Baton Rouge. Yeah. I mean, at, at what point? But no, I, I'm glad that you asked that question because mm -hmm. the distinction has never been made. Yeah. Like a lot of people, when you say Louisiana, they just think New Orleans. New Orleans. But it's other parts, you know, it's Shreveport, it's Lafayette, it's, you know, Monroe, it's, it's New Iberia, it's Plagman, it's Dental Springs. Yeah. There's so many different cities just in one, you know, that make it that. I mean, growing, I, I, growing up with your, with your grandparents, um, you know, at what point did you really start kind of getting mixed up in the streets? Um, the streets was always outside my household. Okay. So I gravitated toward, I said this in other interviews prior to this one, I gravitated toward a lot of individuals that were doing the wrong things with the right intentions. Like, how old were you, do you think, when you, when you first, like... The first time I got arrested? First time you got I arrested? I was 13. 13 years old? I got arrested for stealing. <laughs> What'd you steal? I don't remember what I stole, because I just was stealing so much. Okay. Probably a pair of handcuffs, go carts and everything. I just used to just take. Not like, not like we go and steal it and make money off it. We just was having fun. Yeah. You know, we used to get in cars and drive them. You know what I'm saying? At a young age. You know, just young, just, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how many, from, from 13, how many more times did you get arrested? Um, you know, an arrest is just being put in the backseat of the car. I guess charged yeah, or something. Yeah, so I guess me and me being charged, um, I want to say my first juvenile charge was at 15 okay. that I got. You know what I'm saying? That's aggravated assault, you know, aggravated assault. And that was at 15, and I ended up doing close to like, uh, I came home at 17, so I did close to like two years for that. Wow. But that was during entering the juvenile penal system, and what that did was it took my fear of imprisonment away. It criminalized me at a young age. There's more people locked up in the state of Louisiana than in any country in the world. Really? There's nothing to do there but go to jail. There's no outlet for the youth mm -hmm. or anything like that. You know, so if you want to make it with music, it's really a crying shame. But most of the local talent, they have to, they have to get their money up and then leave the city to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, staying there, you know, it's nothing. And it's just really, you know, it's, it's a hurting feeling at the same time because there's so many people that you love 
from your si from your city and you want to see him win and you want to see him do something positive. You know, it hurt when people call my phone and tell me so-and-so just got locked up. So-and-so went to jail. So-and-so did this. So-and-so did that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you hit things of that nature, you know what I'm saying, it hurt you. So with the music, you know, I look at it as a way to provide all my people to make money legitimately. You know what I'm saying? And, so, and that's really, I mean, I may have rambled, but it's a very yeah, emotional, it's, it's a very emotional subject matter for me. I'm lawyer to nobody but this thing of ours. Try to get cream till a whole team in power. Ask Kevin Gates, don't be asking a nigga. I die before I ever pay draft to a nigga. They shackle the nigga. I don't know how you love in life. Hassle a nigga? Only because they hustle right. I got to be a great. I barely pick a pin up. Time to get established. Trap starting to pick up. Get a little action. Now I'm calling the click up. Gates and love. He stay writing about a bitch. Tablet on the shitter. Writing when I shit. Can't make it. Had to pay the working order fee. Had bumps on my ass from a dirty toilet seat. Pain, but I don't think they hurt as hard as me. Never between teeth. Say it aloud. Had them forcing an abortion, trying to murder my child. It just started. But I aim to see finish. Can't walk away or change. I'm deep in it. The ones that ain't caught up or slain, they defenders. But Gates ain't leaving the game. Believe in it. Just started. And that's a that's a freestyle that I think I ran before. But that's something that I wrote and it means something to me. It's a true story. Dope. You know, when I say I can't make it, I had to pay the work and order fee. Had bumps on my ass from a dirty toilet seat. Yeah, it's staff infection. Yeah. Yeah, you get that when you're in a penal facility. A lot of people might not know about that. But, yeah, that staph infection is real. So you got to clean up around your area. Mm -hmm. They call it GI. You got to make sure you GI your area, general inspection. Right. You know, and I just like to speak about the things that I've been through, the hardships, my struggles, my trials, my tribulations.